So I am Rosie. I currently work at Friends of the Earth and I lead our campaign against plastic pollution. So you are just as important to them as everyone else that they're speaking to that day. Um, they don't know everything. Linking back to the human thing. They need to cover a lot of issues, they have to vote on a lot of things, they have to make a lot of decisions. They, prob they probably know a little bit about a lot, but not lots about little things. <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> um, you may well, with all your background research, go in with more information than they know. Um, so just be aware that if you ask them questions, they might have to just reply and be like, oh, I didn't know that, or oh, that's interesting, or I'll have to look into that. Um, but they're not going to know everything on the day. Um, similarly, you don't need to know everything either. They can ask you questions and you can go, oh, I'll, I'll get back to you and I'll reply to you in a week's time with that answer. Um, you don't have to be the most knowledgeable person on the topic that you're going to. You just need to be passionate, really. You need to really care about what you're talking about. Know some things, obviously. Don't go in totally oblivious to what you're talking about. Um, but you don't have to be an expert on the topic. Um, they are busy. They have a lot of meetings in a day. Um, they might have to go cut a ribbon somewhere and then meet someone else and then go, I don't know, talk at an old people's home. They've got a lot on during the day. So when you do get time with them, it's really precious time. You need to make sure it's short and sweet. So we're going to practice that today as well. If you had half an hour with them, what would you do? But if you had 60 seconds with them, what would you say? We're going to do a bit of practice for that later. Um, as I said, they've got a lot going on in the day. Meeting you will probably be the best part of their day, and you should go in with that confidence as well. Um, they probably had to talk to Joan this morning about someone not picking up their dog poo, and they've just got many, many queries from their constituencies and a whole host of topics. But MPs, time and time again, love chatting to young people that are passionate about a topic and that want to achieve change. So if you go in with that enthusiasm, um, that commitment for change, they're going to think that this is the best meeting of their day and they'll go away remembering that when they go home as well. So go with confidence that you can turn their day around and not talk about dog poo. This is one way that you could design what you're going to say. There are many different ways. It will depend on what works for you. But I'm just going to run you through this one template that you could use to lay out your session and just to make sure that you're covering all the points you want to do. It's really important to prep before you meet your MP because um, it can be very overwhelming and they might ask you a question that goes off topic. Um, if you have everything written down in front of you, questions you want to ask, what you, what you want to get out of it, you can refer back to it or help the session go a lot smoothly and you and the MP will feel a lot more confident about it at the end. So, first of all, introduce yourself. You're all very um, interesting people, I'm sure. So, say a bit about yourself. Say how long you've lived in the area. Any of those personal things that you've learned about it as well. Like, oh, I noticed your mum went to the same school as my mum. Or those types of things. Just build that rapport. Let them know who you are. Let them know why you're there. Um, what problem are you trying to tackle? <coughs> let them know straight away why this is important to you. Who's affected? What's it affecting? Um, if you can throw some stats in as well, or a personal story, that's also fantastic. So you can give that personal edge to it and just give it a bit of evidence to back it up. Um, and then provide them with a solution. What do you think the solution to that problem is? Um, they don't like people just coming to them and moaning all day, being like, oh, there's this and there's this. They like people that come ready with a plan for change. Um, you make their lives easy, basically, because they don't have to do it themselves. So you want to make their lives as easy as possible so that they're more likely to implement something for you. Um, so you pitch your solution to them and then ask them what they think about that solution. Have they already, they've got quite a lot of experience, so can they already see a few holes in that that they can say to you and you can go back and work on them? They're like, oh, well, actually the council, council can't do that because of X, Y, Z. So then you can take this back and use it to redo your plan basically afterwards and you can go back and meet your MP once you've gone through these bits. Um, getting their opinion is always very, very valuable because it gives you already the next steps that you can move on to. Um, and then make sure you have a really clear ask that you want them to do. Is it you want them to vote on something, you want them to attend an event, you want them to, um, well, there's a whole host of things you can ask an MP to do. 
but make sure it's a really, really clear, simple ask that they can do as well. Um, I've made the mistake in the past of asking someone to vote on something, but they're actually a minister or something else, so they're not actually entitled to vote. And you need to do your background research to make sure what you're actually asking is a viable thing that they can do. Um, and ask for a timeline, like, when do you think you'll be able to do this? Or when's the next opportunity you're going to get to take this forward? So that you have some sort of idea of what the next steps are. Hi, I'm Amelia. I'm from Green Futures, which is one of the little projects in our bright future. We're here today to talk about the well, I think so, to talk to you about the accessibility of young people into the environmental sector. It's, um, I think it's really hard at the moment. I really didn't know that much about it until about two years ago. I feel like that's a really big issue. I feel like a lot of people need to know about it and they can get into it. I'm really lucky. I'm really looking at now because I have a two year placement at River Rivers Trust, which um, is one through Green Futures, and that is what I want to do. But there are lots of children out there that want to do the same as me but don't know how to. So I think a solution could be to get apprenticeships more out there and to get internships more out there. I think we should possibly do a like major companies that are like producing cement and tarmac that are really pollutant have to sponsor an apprenticeship or an intern at a charitable um, organisation like Wildlife Trust or Rivers Trust so then they're offsetting their carbon footprint by sponsoring a future, like a, a future advocate for conservation. Um, what I want you to do is, is you obviously have such an influential, um, like, if you have such an influence over people in your constituency you could show your support to do to all of this, then companies in your constituency might be more willing to do it and supporting our constituents. So how do you suggest I go about showing my support for Well we possibly through social media, if you have social media sharing what we are about and then getting the word out there so then the older generation know about it as well as the younger generation. and I'm from Green Futures which is one of the many projects on the Our Bright Future project and in Green Futures we have uh, different groups like the Apprenticeship group and an Eco Schools group and another group the Green Guardians that is about getting people with disadvantages out into the local area. I'm here today to talk to you about how I feel about young people being in the environment. Now, see, I was from, I'm from a very lucky background I live up in Cumbria where we have hills and greenery and young people who get outside all the time. Well, not all the time, a lot if they wanted to. But I understand that a lot of people, like here in London, don't have that access. So I think that it would be very good if we could get the education system to support more getting people out into the environment. And so things like having to have within the curriculum an obligatory five lessons a term outside and I don't mean lessons like PE which they'll have anyway things like having your geography outside because geography is about the outside when it needs to be because like I did geography GCSE and I didn't want to go out on a field trip surely the government should be supporting and encouraging geography to go to rivers and all of this or you could have your PSHE lessons outside which you don't need Wi-Fi for you don't need so you could have it outside um, there are many benefits for this obviously it helps with mental health which is a massive issue in England at the moment and um, it also will help people have you know dreams about the environment so that we can prove our future environment for our future generations and um, what I'm asking you is for you to be able to with your position to be able to write to the head of um, the department for education and put forward my suggestion you could sure <laughs> <laughs> Woo! sometimes you might book a meeting with them um, and their assistant will show up instead this is totally normal they're very busy people they very often send an, send an assistant instead or if you send an email your assistant might reply but you need to act as if they are the MP they are just as important they will 
they almost have more power than the peaks. They're the ones like actually doing stuff. <laughs> um, so just do everything you have planned exactly the same. You might not know any background information on them, but that's fine. You have the background information on the MP still, and they're working for the MP. So stay the same. Um, as you practice with the elevator pitch, the MP may get called away to do something. They may only have a few minutes with you. So make sure you have, you can have the longer pitch, but know which are the most important things you want to say. So Ray says on that top point, follow up to be arranged. I mean, if he says oh, sorry. the assistant, like, to arrange for these. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if the assistant um, comes, do try and do a follow up meeting. You will have got information from the assistant anyway. That will mean that you can do an even better MP meeting afterwards. So definitely always try and follow up. Um, it's okay to go in a small group. You don't have to go alone. Um, MPs want to meet people in the constituency. As long as there's one person in their constituency, you can bring anyone else you want with you. It really doesn't matter. So for example, we um, we're looking at putting some pressure on an MP that is in Surrey about fracking recently. Um, most influential people about that are the fracking nan nanas that live up in Lancashire. So we were getting people to book an MP with their, a, a meeting with a, con meeting with their MP in their constituency in Surrey, but bringing along a fracking nana with them. So the fracking nanas know a lot, they've got a lot of passion, they can really go in on it. But they've got that meeting and then the MP has all, all the things in front of them. Um, so don't be afraid to go with someone. It doesn't make any less. Uh, in fact, I'd encourage it. Moral support. Um, I'd just say on that, do the same prep that you do for meeting on your own. Because the last yeah. time I went to the MP in a small group, one person hadn't done the prep with us, came in and then hijacked the meeting, and it was an absolute disaster. Yeah, and definitely. Like, yeah, Make sure was, you know who is going to say what, yeah. break the meeting down a bit, mm -hmm. so that you've got it rehearsed, you come in prepared, looking professional. Mm -hmm. um, your this is just a practical thing if you're in Westminster. Sometimes it might not be in a room. They might just take you down to the cafe. Totally fine as well. Just It can become a bit of a shock if you're expecting to go into their meeting room and they're like, oh, just grab a coffee, which links on to let them pay for your drinks. <laughs> <laughs> they get it expensed. Um, I've heard so many people that have refused drink because they didn't have any money on them, um, especially as young people. So just a really minor point. But they're <laughs> offering, if they take you to a cafe and offer to buy you a drink, go ahead. Um, so linking on to follow on steps, one really great thing is social media these days. Um, take a picture with them, post it on your social media, ask them to post it on their social media. If you want them to support something, you can even take along like a little placard that says, I love the bees or whatever. We did a lot of bees with MPs. Um, and then you have a visual representation of them supporting something and they can't get away from that. Um, if you post it on your social media, get anyone else to, and they love, um, looking like, well, not looking like, they do love it as well, <laughs> but like being part of the community and supporting things. So they actively like putting these types of things on their social media as well. So you, if you tag them, chances are they'll retweet, retweet you as well. And it's a really good ask if you just want something quick and easy for them to do. Um, after the meeting, email them to say thank you and then confirm what the follow-up steps were. So just make sure that you, you're not forgotten immediately once they go on to their next meeting. Make sure you have that email, cover what was covered in the meeting, follow up with any questions if they ask you something and you didn't know an answer, um, and confirm what that ask was, what they were going to do, those timelines that you agreed to. Um, and then hopefully that might lead into another meeting or you might have asked them to an event or something like that. Um, but again, about a month after your meeting or any time after your meeting, but give it some time following again and see where they've got up to, being like, oh, we met last month, you agreed to do this, how's that going? Have you made any progress? Um, just so you can keep checking in with them. They have to reply to you if you email them, like, literally, it's their job, they have to send an email. Um, so feel free to email them as many times as you want to check they're actually doing something on the asks that you've asked them to do. Um, so follow up is just as important as the preparation you do as well. So you've got three stages. You've got the preparation for the meeting, the meeting itself, and the follow-up to the meeting. All three stages are just as vital as each other. Um, if you miss one, it can knock the whole thing slightly, so make sure you put enough energy into all three of those. It's not all about the face-to-face -face meeting.